Good day grade 11s, welcome to your first lesson in grade 11. In this lesson we're going to be looking at vectors in two dimensions and specifically we're going to just be revising vectors and scalars. So everything we measure can be divided into two groups, either scalars or vectors. Your scalar is a physical quantity that has magnitude only. In other words, it just tells how big it is, but there's no direction. So it only tells like 10 kilometers, 3 kilometers, um, whatever. There's no up or down, sideways, left to right. Whereas a vector is a physical quantity that has got magnitude and direction. And it represents, you can see that there's this F dash here, and you can see that this F dash with a little high, a dash at the top represents the force vector where F represents the magnitude of the force. Now we don't really use that so much anymore but if you see it then that's what that means. Right, so just to give you examples of scalars and vectors which you should already know. Distance is a scalar, in other words it tells us how far we've ran, okay, or walked, whatever, it's usually measured in meters or kilometers, the SI unit for distance is meters. Displacement is basically how far we are from where we started. Okay, how far? In other words, your distance will be something like you could travel from here to there. That would be A and then we could go down a bit and that would be B. That would be your distance and your displacement is as the crow flies straight across. And what else does displacement have? It has A direction. So it's not just the magnitude, it is also the direction. Another example of a scalar is mass. In other words, this has how much matter you are made up of. So it's always measured in kilograms or grams. Weight is the force with which you are attracted to the center of the earth or whatever planet you're on. And this is measured in newtons. So that is a vector because it's a force it's a force. Speed is just distance over time, so distance is a scalar, time is a scalar, so speed equals distance over time, whereas velocity is equal to displacement, displacement over time, and therefore because displacement is a vector, velocity is a vector. Time, as you know at the moment, we cannot go travel back in time or any other way except forward, so time is a scalar, Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time and since velocity is a vector and time is a scalar, acceleration is a vector again. An electric charge, in other words, whether or not you get um, shocked by lightning or whatever, electric charge is a scalar as well. So those are just examples of scalars and vectors. Guys, you should know this from grade 8, grade 9 and grade 10. So this is just a quick revision. Now, representing vectors, we always use an arrow. It tells us how big the vector is and the direction of the vector. In other words, if we've got a very long arrow, it means we've got a very big vector and it's obviously in this direction. Or we have a little vector like that, it means it's a small vector, okay, tiny, so in other words, it's either short distance or small force, and that is the direction. Now there are three ways we can represent the direction of the vector. We can either use compass or we can use bearings or the direction of a vector relative to another vector. So let's just go through these three. The first one is a compass. As you know there's north, then there's east, south and west. And we always tell our directions with respect to these four cardinal points. So for example this vector one we could say is three degrees east of north, I mean north of east, 30 degrees north of east. We could have also said that it was 60 degrees east of north, but we always go from the side that it's closest to. So this is 30 degrees north of east. Okay, if we look at another one, our second vector, you can see that this is 30 degrees east of south. Okay, because we're telling it it's 30 degrees. So it's 30 degrees east of south. And again, we're going from the side that it's closest to. So your compass readings are always with respect to the four cardinal points. Okay, bearings are always from north degrees and it's always taken from north. So north is north degrees. Then we've got east is 90, south is 180 and 270 is west. So this is north, east, south and west. So if we've got V1 
which they tell us is exactly like it was before. Basically, it is 30 degrees north of east. It's now on a bearing of 60 degrees. In other words, we're saying from north, it's on a bearing of 60 degrees. Okay, whereas here with V2, we are saying that it is on a bearing of 210 degrees. In other words, it's actually 30 degrees west of south, but from north going all the way around, it is 210. How do we get that? That's naught. 90, 180 plus a 30, that's 210 degrees. So it's always taken from north. Right. Now, the other way we can do this is, and the last way we can look at it, is the direction of a vector relative to another vector. So in each of these cases, vector A is at 30 degrees to vector B. And you must remember the direction of the vector is always measured at the tail of the vector. So you have got A and B. Right, and we're saying that they are 30 degrees from each other. Yeah, we've got A and B, and again, you'll notice that there are tails are together, and then we've got A and B. So when we're looking at this, this there is the 30 degrees, because we take it from the tail of the vector. That there is 30 degrees, and that there is 30 degrees. And that grade 11 is a quick revision on your vectors and scalars. Please make sure you understand the difference between vectors and scalars, and also how we can measure them. Thank you. Have a great day.